Um, as we always do, uh, Outdoors Queensland would like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land where we gather across Queensland um, and further afield. Uh, we pay respect to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge the important roles that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples play in relation to the land, sky and waterways used for outdoor activities. I'm in Brisbane or Mianjin on Yagara country which is a place of the Jagera and Turrbal peoples. Uh, so if you'd like to, you can um, pop in the chat the, um, the place and the country that you're joining from. Um, if you want to do that, that'd be great. Um, I'd also um, like to acknowledge the funding provided by the Queensland Government, which supports outdoor activities right across the state, uh, including the funding that allows Outdoors Queensland to do our work. Um, and we acknowledge the work that um, various government departments and ministers do uh, in relation to outdoor activities, including uh, sport and recreation who are within the Department of Tourism, Innovation and Sport. And I'm not just saying that because Jess from Sport and Rec's here. Um, yeah, it is a, we do like to acknowledge that support from the Queensland Government. Um, so welcome to another session of Coffee and Conversation. This is our 10th uh, scheduled session for 2022. Um, I'm Dom Courtney, Executive Officer of Outdoors Queensland and our Operations Manager, Mark Squires, is uh, my co-host for today's session. Um, really like to welcome um, all of the members from Outdoors Queensland, plus others who are joining us um, and anyone from interstate. I haven't checked the whole list yet, but um, yeah, we, it's always good to have a good lineup. Uh, as I said, these recordings are publicly available uh, on our website and YouTube, so you can go back and re-watch it later, or you can watch it up there if you do miss the session live. Um, I've just done a, a bit of an agenda for the session today, um, a few opportunities there to discuss, and we'll also talk a little bit about um, the COVID-19 rules and protocols. Um, if you've got any uh, topics you'd like to discuss in the future, um, please just contact me or Mark. Um, we actually had a couple just this week um, as a response, just when we marked it, the, the mail out, the reminder about today's session. So it's always nice to get some feedback about different things that are going on in the sector. So yeah, feel free to, to contact us anytime. Uh, a few reminders, uh, the nominations are now open for the 2022 Outdoors Queensland Awards. Um, they, we have changed the award categories to reflect the variety and diversity of the outdoor sector in Queensland. So we've now got specific awards for outdoor rec, outdoor recreation, outdoor education, outdoor play, adventure therapy, adventure tourism, workforce development across the outdoor sector uh, in the volunteer and paid workforce, and also a government achievement award. And we've, we've got um, an emerging achiever award as well, which is a newcomer to the outdoor sector. And, um, it's um it's it's been changed a little bit it's, it was the young achiever award in the past but we're recognizing you don't have to be young in years to be a newcomer to the outdoors so that awards uh, category has been sort of broadened a little bit so if you know of anyone who may have just joined the outdoor sector um and and they're doing great things maybe have a look at um nominating them or tapping them on the shoulder to um to nominate themselves so yeah, please have a think about who you might nominate or who you think should nominate. And um, yeah, feel free to um, do that. It's, it's all about recognising excellence across the outdoors. And we know there's a lot of people doing terrific things um, and we get some really wonderful nominations every year. The nominations close the 24th of August. Uh, so still got a few weeks, uh, but yeah, don't hold off until the last minute. Um, it is a pretty simple nomination process we try to keep it simple but there is a bit of information required um, and as I said the um, you can nominate multiple people or organizations or nominate yourself and the presentation will be the last Friday of October and we'll be doing that um, as an online presentation and you don't have to be a member of Outdoors Queensland to nominate um, but doesn't mean um, you shouldn't be a member it's we're always welcoming um, members uh, another reminder, um, the Office of Industrial Relations, um, their 
they're investigating uh, some workplace health and safety regulations which is about improving the safety of workers and others when operating quad bikes and side-by-side -side vehicles in a workplace. So it specifically says in the information about this that the private use of quad bikes and side-by-side um, outside of a workplace is not captured in the scope of this proposed uh, workplace health and safety leg leg regulations. Um, but they are talking about um, helmet use, um, prohibiting kids on adult quad bikes and side-by-side -side, uh, vehicles, I think it's driving them uh, particularly, um, and passenger restrictions for some vehicles and seat belts as well, where that seat belt use, I think, where they've been installed, which is probably more relevant to the side-by-side -side vehicles. So it is worth having a look at if um, you or your organisation uses um, any of those vehicles in the workplace, um, because it does potentially have some impact, uh, particularly for some adventure tourism operators um, and some others. So it's worth having a look at that one. And uh, they're seeking feedback on the proposed regulations until the 31st of August. So it seems to flag that one. Uh, if anyone has any questions as we go along, please um, feel free to put your hand up or sing out. Um, the next little section, a couple of reminders, and then I'll, um, I'll also hand over to one of our guests to give us some more detail on the Active Kit Round 2 and also the Accelerate Action Plan under the Active Queens, Activate Queensland strategy. Um, so Sport and Rec's Fair Play Voucher System, it's now a fully online grant system and um, organisations or providers, you can register online to be a provider in the system but also round seven of the fair play vouchers um, opened on the 20th of July. It's scheduled to close the 28th of September, but it does say all earlier if it's fully, fully allocated. I'm not sure if it is fully allocated yet, but they often do go very quickly, the, the, um, the fair play vouchers. So um, if you're a, a, a carer or a parent of a child who qualifies for those vouchers, it's certainly worth um, getting involved and if you're an organisation and you're a provider under that system, uh, there is timelines on when you need to um, redeem the vouchers as well. So um, the other, the second one there is the Sport and Rec um, Disaster Recovery Program. Um, and that's about funding to re-establish facilities and activities after extreme national, natural events, uh, which includes floods, fire, cyclones and severe storms. Um, as everyone knows, we've had some of those recently, unfortunately, uh, across Queensland. Um, and it is right now, it's open um, in areas that have been declared under the disaster recovery funding arrangements. We've discussed this one previously, it is still open. Um, and there are some other additional grant payments available, but you should check your eligibility online. Um, it's mostly about uh, not-for-profit organizations in that that particular one but there are other ones that apply to businesses as well as far as the um, disaster recovery um, grants so yeah um, the second two dot points there the active kit round two and the activate Queensland action plan two um, these ones uh, I'd like to introduce Jess Cook um, Jess, Jess is the manager of the partnerships office within sport and rec um, and the Partnerships Office is a single point of entry to Sport and Rec, and it's all about um, helping with collaboration and um, achieving um, some of the work through partnerships with industry, but also with other, um, other organisations. So um, and I've invited Jess to come along and um, speak to us about Active Kit Round 2 and, um, and the Activate Queensland Accelerate Action Plan. So over to you, Jess. Thanks, Tom. That was an awesome intro. All right, I am going to try and share my screen. Apologies, I don't use Zoom very often. Let's do this one here. Did that work? Yes. Perfect. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, I'd like to start just by acknowledging the traditional owners as well of the land that which uh, we meet today and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. 
So I might, yeah, I'm going to start with Active Kit um, and I'll just go through some of the key sort of program parameters. So hopefully it will be helpful to you guys. Alrighty. Got three screens going, so it's a bit. Alrighty. So um, following on from round one of Active Kit, um, Active Kit is again supported by both um, the Department of Tourism, Innovation and Sport um, and also Health and Wellbeing Queensland. So our partnership with HWQ, as we call them, um, enables us to work collaboratively and explore opportunities to further encourage healthy lifestyles. Um, through this co-investment with Health and Wellbeing Queensland, um, a total of $4 million is available for round two. Um, and as you can see on the slide here that I've got, Applications opened on the 21st of July and um, they will be closing on the 18th of August, which I think is about two weeks away. Yep, two weeks away. Um, and then hope, we're hoping to, with everything going um, well, that projects will be able to commence um, in October. So similar to round one, we've got two funding tiers available. Um, tier one is up to a hundred thousand, and then tier two, um, anything greater than a hundred, um, and then up to that two hundred thousand. Um, and we do require that, that co-contribution, so twenty percent um, for tier one, and then fifty percent for tier two. Next slide. So a slightly different to round one for those who are familiar with it. Um, we have one challenge which looks to increase physical activity participation of those Queenslanders who are insufficiently active. Um, but we have two categories. So we want to do this by either enabling opportunities for inclusive physical activity or ena uh, enabling opportunities for that more flexible and social physical activity. So the difference. <clears throat> Research shows, um, so the different, sorry, category one is actually about the cohort. Um, so research shows that certain groups of the population are more um, insufficiently active and face specific barriers to participation. So under this category, we're looking for um, practical and fit for purpose solutions that respond to barriers um, for children and young people, as you can see there, women over 18 um, or people with a disability. The second category, um, we're saying that it's about the method. Um, so again, research shows that people want to engage with and participate in physical activity that, that's shifting. Um, and that's been accelerated by um, the pandemic, as we know. So finding new ways for industry to engage um, Queenslanders in physical activity opportunities that best suits their needs is vital. Um, so, yeah, under this category, we're looking for organisations to put forward um, new delivery methods um, and modes to increase activity. Um, we recognise that one size doesn't fit all, um, so that's why we're looking for products and services or solutions that are tailored uh, fit for purpose and address those societal trends, you know, in that more unstructured um, physical activity. You know, we know through COVID people were um, preferring to, well, probably had to uh, exercise in their local areas or places that were really close to their um, residents um, and looking for that more social and casual formats now um, to connect them back into community um, now that they were removed from that more you know traditional structured you know sporting clubs that type of thing so people realized that social connection was really important so how do we come up with um, ideas um, how do we use technologies to do that um, a bit around the eligibility. So like most of our <laughs> funding programs, um, you know, this one, we got to be registered uh, with an ABN, um, be based or headquartered in Queensland uh, and have no outstanding compliance issues with both our department, um, but also Office of Fair Trading. Um, organisation types that are eligible. So active industry, which is state level uh, organisations. Uh, and state level peak organisations, um, any national sporting organisations operating under a um, Queensland, in a Queen, sorry, operating in Queensland under a governance model recognised by Sport Australia, regional or state wide not for profits, uh, local governments, tertiary research institutes, um, and we're looking at startups and small to medium businesses again. Next slide. So project eligibility, what are we looking for? So firstly, the product or service must either be technology or non-technology based. It's kind of, yeah, 
that's a funny one. Uh, but secondly, the solution must be minimal viable product or beyond. So what we're looking at is that top right hand side. Um, you know, being market ready is kind of what the sort of the words that we use ready to be trialed or implemented with your target cohort or you know you have um uh, mvp product to trial with yeah at least one or two customers hoping to be more but yes not proof of concept or just an idea at this stage we're really looking to sort of seed fund that trialing um and implementation um, mandatory requirements um, can be found in the guidelines. There's a few of those, so a lot of attachments that are required. Um, check it our website. So I've got the generic one there, but I think Dom, you've also got some um, links in the commentary there, which is awesome. If you do have any specific questions, I'll throw to everyone at the moment. Hopefully I can answer them if you have them, um, but also there's the partnerships inbox um, email address there. So send us through an email with your questions um, and someone will be able to help you there. Any questions from the floor? I'm happy to ask a question if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely, Anna. <laughs> Um, thanks so much, Jess, and we're really excited that ActiveKit has come back out again. Um, one of the challenge for our um, smaller organisations like Queensland Walks is the co-contribution component, um, mm, the 20,000, yep. 20%, 20 um, and, um, which means that in most, on most occasions we can't apply for that, even though we've got some great ideas and, and some ready to roll. So can the 20% be a in-kind um, staffing, et cetera? How does that structure work? Is there any wriggle room there? Yeah, um, unfortunately for this round, it's um, it was considered and it was a, it's a no, we're sticking with the cash contribution. Um, however, I'd probably say what we're trying to lead people towards is being able to partner with, say, a local government or, um, you know, a state level organisation and that type of thing to sort of not pull together resources, but collaborate and partner in that way and then be able to, you know, be in a better position to apply and have that co-contribution. Um, not to say that that won't be allowed in the next round. We're really just, when we first started Active Kit, because we've opened it up to startups and small to medium businesses and, and people you know, in the not-for-profit sector as well, um, in this innovation sort of space, not everything will be successful. And, and to have skin in the game um, has been put, you know, the co-contribution has been put there as a, a risk mitigation sort of strategy for the department essentially so um, I definitely have written that down um, as one of the you know feedback from industry um, on our funding program but something that we can probably think about um, in next round because it's yeah it comes up quite a lot so I really appreciate you bringing that to the to the front of this conversation and I'll yeah definitely pass it on to my boss Thanks and so I don't know if that actually answered you, <laughs> answered your question, yeah, but yeah, does, it's hard to. It does, and I, um, I was led to believe that the last round did have some uh, in-kind contribution. Um, so maybe that was incorrect information, but it is certainly information that we provided to Health and Wellbeing Queensland previously. Perfect, yeah. Able to apply. Um, we, we, our organisation runs on the smell of an oily rag um, and uh, we extend over and above what our funding is. So, um, and I'm sure there's a stack of organisations like Queensland yeah. here. Um, Absolutely. It's a great concept, but just that 20% is really challenging for most orgs. Yeah, no, absolutely. I can understand. Um, also to your comment about round one, I'm not too sure about that. I think it would be over, and over the co-contribution you know what I mean? Like they might have put in in kind, but it might not have been seen as their, um, you know, mandatory co-contribution, if that makes sense. There... <laughs> Sorry, I was just looking at the comments to see if there was any questions. Any other questions, comments, feedback? I've got one for you, Jess. Um, just from the, the um, I, th I think when I looked at it on the startup, um, Particularly because because it, it is this one as you said it is for businesses as well as non profit mm. organisations mm -hmm. which is great to see um, but I did see one on there I think in the startups you still have to have a couple of years of trading is that right I was, I was trying to remember oh the ASIC yeah yeah, yeah the re registered yeah. with ASIC since a certain date yeah that that again is probably one of those um, risk mitigation things for us 
Um, we know that not all startups will be successful, you know, continue to be successful and they, they you know, potentially may fall over, same with small to medium businesses. Um, so that was just a learning from our innovation colleagues who play in this space a lot around innovation, technology, um, that type of thing. But if, if that, if we find that's a challenge, um, the same as the co-contribution, you know, I'm happy to take that and, and, and work and inform the next round. Um, we have, I can say that we have had a few that that ASIC registration has become, you know, the deciding factor whether they're ineligible or eligible. Um, yep. So we're collating all that information and if it becomes too much of a barrier for organisations and businesses, we, yeah, absolutely look at it again. Because, you know, we, we want to make sure we're balancing, yeah, risk to the department and Queensland government and, you know, making sure that we're providing funding to projects that are, yeah, potentially going to get great outcomes. So, yeah. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Um, no anyone have any other questions for Jess on the Active Kit program? We, I should say, we are actually um, the recipient of one of the round one uh, ones, which yeah, great, great getaways. Queensland was funded through that, which is terrific. Um, and we've been um, delivering on that. Well, Mark's been doing most of the work on that one, but yeah, um, and we do appreciate it. Um, yeah, and it, I think it's worth um, doing that. Uh, as far as applying for them, because there are some really good outcomes um, in there. Absolutely, um, yeah. And as our reporting wraps up from round one, Dom, as you said, you know, we, we're seeing really cool things in, things coming through and outcomes being achieved and just being able to do things a little bit differently to what we've normally done. It's really, yeah, it's pretty great to see. So hopefully we just keep building on that. And, and, the, and round one was the first time we had ever done that. So there's absolutely a lot of learnings and round two is going to build on those learnings. So we're just going to hopefully keep getting um, better in that space of being able to do things in a different way and also being able to leverage that technology and, and um, yeah. Cool. Thanks, right. Jess. I will change over to, oh, see if I can do this, apologies. So now I'll introduce Jess. Uh, <laughs> we introduced <laughs> Jess to speak about the um, Accelerate, which is Action Plan 2 under the Activate Queensland strategy, which was only released last Friday, Jess. Yes. So our minister, he announced it. I think it was the same day as budget, which, yeah, was last week, which is exciting. I'll just share this one. So... I'm going to go through this quite quickly and I, I'll try to answer any questions that you have, but um, I will also, yeah, point you in the right direction if I can't answer that. So hopefully that one's sharing now. Alrighty. So as you guys might be aware, we've got that 10-year um, strategy, Activate Queensland, and we're very much still committed to that overarching 10-year strategy. Um, so Accelerate is the next, the second action plan, um, which will be sort of Queensland government's vision for the next three years. Um, <clears throat> just change that one there. I have a few sort of statistics up here. Um, so it's a snapshot of the achievements from our Activate, which is our first action plan. And for Accelerate, um, we really want to build off this foundation and um, we might not have you know, being able to do everything because of the pandemic, you know, there was a lot of challenges for us, the industry and that sort of thing. But we wanted, you know, the pivotal achievements that we want to build, build off um, for this round, this action plan. Um, so this action plan accelerate is aligned to the COVID-19 economic recovery plan, as well it is, as it's aligned to our 10 year strategy. Um, and we'll cover five commitments aimed at building and um, strengthening the industri industry's capabilities. So as you can see, um, the commitment one is about collaborating, collaborating with active industry to get more Queenslanders moving more often. Um, the second one is around enhancing pathways for Queensland's athletes, coaches and officials. Um, the third one there is around our precincts and venues, um, and we want to make sure that they're serving both community and industry and making sure that it's from grassroots all the way to elite, you know, everywhere in between. Championing an industry leading network of infrastructure. So as you guys are probably aware, we always have a very um, strong infrastructure program, but bucket of money, um, and then leveraging events and opportunities, which lends itself to 
um, which I didn't mention before is, um, you know, they, is it a lens or is it a sort of focus? But 2032 is obviously big in everyone's mind. And, and that's, you can probably see that reflected through our, um, our next action plan. So we have, this is sort of the knowns for us in, the, in regards to funding. Um, so we wanted to make sure that, you know, we know that it's hard for our stakeholders to apply for programs when they just randomly pop up. So we we're trying to do some forward planning, which is always difficult, but here are some of the knowns um, as you guys were talking about before, fair play, um, support for clubs, infrastructure, active kit, um, and then you've got your industry funding there and then our specific First Nations program. So um, have a look, you know, familiarize yourself with that funding stuff there. And um, I know that I didn't touch on much, but I could expand on this stuff here if you would like me to. Um, the things that I am most across are probably the leveraging events and opportunities. We see there's a big opportunity um, to leverage some of the major sporting events, but also the localised events in areas. Um, and also being able to sort of activate the infrastructure that we're putting, we're investing a lot of money into across the state. So not only our venues and precincts, but, you know, the grassroots um, infrastructure that we invest in on the day to day, you know, how do we actually bring that all together and make sure we're leveraging all investment um, from Queensland government. We're working very closely with um, Tourism and Events Queensland, our other colleagues in the department, so our tourism innovation peeps, to yeah look at what those opportunities are. Um, and the action plan outlines, you know, obviously there's opportunities um, to sponsor, you know, events, programs, opportunities. So um, that's one of the big ones. Um, under enhancing pathways, probably not as relevant for you guys. However, I do think, you know, with more sort of um, non-traditional sports getting into the Olympics, there's a breadth of opportunities for you, um, your sector going into this. So we want to develop a strategic positioning document or a direction for um, pathways. So in the next couple of months, we will be doing consultation with industry to really understand the opportunities and challenges there for you know both athletes, participants, coaches, and officials, all the way through. Um, and our blueprint, you know, really wants to look at how do we make sure um, there's a connected um, and coordinated pathway for that because people are doing everything, um, and we don't know if there's duplication. We don't really have oversight on what's happening, so. We want a document to be the new direction for that um, and we want industry to champion that. So we want to um, bring you guys on the journey and consult with you um, really early on. So that's kind of the next step for that particular commitment. Um, commitment one, obviously active industry, same stuff we've been doing um, in the funding, funding world. So uh, active industry fund, the project fund, active kit that I've just spoken about. Um, and just really thinking about how we can help industry um, build and strengthen the um, capabilities. Okay. And then the other That's two just... hopefully hopefully speak for themselves, but I can't talk about infrastructure and venues too much. It's not my okay. area of expertise. I think one of the big things on that, Jess, is um, it's a bit of a broader lens of what the active industry actually looks like now. Like we particularly, mm. you know, in the outdoors world, we're sort of a blend of businesses and non-profit organisations and just yep. wonderful individuals who do, do a lot of this stuff. But it's good that we're getting to that point of view from and recognising that it's also the whole of government approach. And there's a page in the strategy that, that looked at all the different commitments across the government of areas that need investment, which includes things like, you know, national parks and state forests, but yep. also the various areas. So, yeah, I think it's really good to see that um that yeah. um alignment across the whole of government for this and it is a whole of government strategy it's not just um sport and rec what they're going to do yeah. for the next three years yep. it's about the government as a whole and you guys leading the charge so thank you for that yeah, well, thanks right. for leading the charge and thanks for the presentation <laughs> no worries it's, i'll just stop sharing but yeah if there's any other questions i know that i probably rabbited on about the accelerate
No, that's great. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Jess? Uh, yeah, I've got a question for Jess. <clears throat> Um, hi, I'm Trey. I'm from the Australian Cycloning Association. Um, how you doing? Yeah, pretty well. Um, so with this uh, Activate, how much do you work with uh, local councils? Yep, good question. Um, so we have quite a large team on the ground. So we've got a service delivery area of, I'm going to say, more than 60 staff. Um, and they're split into five service delivery areas and they are usually engaging with local council quite a bit um, depending on the topic um, obviously the infrastructure stuff they would be working heavily with them um, and then yeah I can't speak for every area but yeah they're one of our um, key stakeholders in our service right. area yeah. there's a reason I asked one of the big barriers for people getting into slacklining here in uh in Brisbane uh, and also other local councils throughout Queensland is uh, just restrictions on on slacklining in, in council parks. So this is oh, one yeah. of the big barriers for, for people being active in our sport. It's just mm -hmm. uh, getting shut down for slacklining. Currently in the Brisbane City Council, their uh, slacklining is considered a restricted activity with the okay. processes to actually um, go slacklining, it's very mm -hmm. clunky. So that would be a very simple thing to fix to get more people active in, in our sport. Yep. So Trent, yep. you're, talking to, sorry, Jess, you're, you're talking about a policy position rather than an investment in infrastructure, yeah? Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, I know that you mentioned uh, Brisbane City Council. Um, is there um, other councils that have this view or do we think that it's just some and not others like I was just I'm probably thinking of is it a broader you know restrictions from council or is it just by council if that makes sense um I'm more familiar with Brisbane City Council uh I can't really speak with on um, specifics with other councils but I know Gold Coast stuck liners do have restrictions there and also up in uh far north Queensland and council areas up there of Okay. reports of slack liners being told to, to pack up and move on yeah and I, I suppose i don't really have the answer for you but i do think you know that's something that um sport and rec and, and maybe outdoors queensland and and yourself can um you know start a conversation and and sort of um look into that a little bit further because as you said they're putting in restrictions and that you know is stopping people from you know partaking in your activity so um yeah i'm happy for you to email me um, or email the um, partnerships inbox if we want to talk a little bit further about that. Thanks, Jess. No worries. Hello. Anna, did you? It... Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks so much, Jess. Um, That's right. So we were really excited uh, before we got our first round of funding. We we're really excited to contribute to the consultation for um, um, Activate and. Um, a lot of the conversations when we were sitting in the room was around uh, walking um, and being able to enable people to walk more. Um, we know that walking is the most popular recreational activity in Queensland. Um, and yet probably what we saw when it came out in the action plan wasn't a lot that supported that outdoor recreation. Um, most popular, least funded, least organised, and we generally don't put on events unless they're fundraising events or for the very fit. Mm -hmm. I suppose that we're looking to ways that we know that we can enable and get people moving, um, and particularly those um, uh, the harder to reach communities. Um, and we know that sporting locations and venues are one really easy way to achieve this with infrastructure footpaths and curb ramps. We're seeing quite a few um, newer developments that don't have um, a footpath around the, the oval or connecting to and from. And this is really easy wins for walking. Um, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make that comment and see how, and I know that there's the walking strategy, but we haven't quite got that gap between our sporting venues. But is there a potential for some legacy projects that could really enable all of Queenslanders to benefit from Paralympics and the Olympic Games? 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I wouldn't say there isn't. Um, to me, yeah, I was going to mention the walking strategy, but maybe there's something that we can do with our infrastructure team to think about, you know, how do we enable that to happen? Um, because obviously, you know, the decision making of what you know, what the sport venue looks like versus, you know, what else do we put around it? I'm not entirely sure who is that, you know, person that has to tick that off. But however, I still think we need to push that conversation a little bit more um, because I see, I, I too see benefit in that. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something that we can, again, have a chat with our infrastructure and service delivery area just to really unpack and see how we can enable that to happen. And even if we I don't want to use the word pilot, but pilot it somewhere um, and be able to just see how much use, you know what I mean? Like actually understand how the benefits actually realized in that community. I'm I'm all about it. But um, yeah, just I reckon just flick an email to um, either myself or the partnerships inbox and we can we can start that conversation because I think I know that I've just answered this <laughs> pretty much the same question, but I think the power of conversation you know, continuing that conversation with the people who um, the relevant people will be our best bet. That would be fantastic. And we'd be really happy to engage with Outdoors Queensland on that conversation. We know it pops up awesome. all the time from our members yep. and collaborators. And, uh, you know, to getting to slacklining or to getting to other sporting events or activities, we need to encourage walking and riding there. And that's that missing yep. link that we're seeing um, to uh, Saturday sporting events with the kids. People are needing to drive there and that has, you know, roll on effect. So there are some really easy wins there. It just is some investment in infrastructure. Yeah. No, great question. And that's sorry to chime in. That is a state and local issue. Um, so mm. there's lots of wins there. Yeah. Just writing that cool. down. Thanks. Thanks. Um, thanks very much, Jess. Um, and no thanks worries. for joining us today. Um, you're Thank always you. welcome Thank to, you for to join me. us. No worries <laughs> at all. Cheers. All righty. Um, so the next um, important guest we have is Anna, who was just. Um, just grilling Jess, but um, yeah, so Anna's um, Executive Officer of Queensland Walks, and I've asked Anna to come along to tell us about uh, Queensland Walks Month, which is a celebration of walking, running, rolling, and strolling. So over to you, Anna. Thanks so much, Dom, and um, thanks for answering the question and the introduction, Dom. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands that we meet and walk upon. Um, that's the Yagara and Tarabal people where I'm from um, and pay our respects to elders past, present and our uh, emerging leaders. Um, so Queensland Walks Month, um, it's the second year that we've had a month long celebration of walking. Um, uh, I have met some of you before and talked about Queensland Walks Month last year. Thanks for having me on. We shifted the, the month um, to August uh, and it's working well for us and it's been beautiful weather for it. Um, we launched the Queensland Walks Month in Harvey Bay. We're trying to do a lot more regional engagement with local council and, and local community. So we're really excited and we had a great great time walking along the um, foreshore of Harvey Bay and looking at some of their fabulous infrastructure that they've just built. Uh, so Queensland Walks Month is a great way that we can profile walking, uh, normalise walking. Apparently it's uh, not a normal thing. So here we are, we need, we, we need to talk about why walking is important for everyone and to talk about um, how we can improve the spaces for walking. So when we're talking about walking, we want to make sure that it's inclusive, it's an equitable discussion, it's about sustainable transport. So we talk about walking, running, rolling and strolling. And of course, every single person does a little bit of that or a lot of that um, on their daily activities. So we're calling for community walking correspondence. Um, so that can be as an organization or it can be as an individual. Um, and so we wanna hear where you're walking, what makes you walk more and how we can improve it. Um, so we can do that with photos and videos. There's more information on of our website to do that. Um, but what we'd love you to do is um, uh, take us for a walk in your local neighborhood or where your sporting venue, for example, and uh, show us uh, those locations and um, tag us on socials and um, 
do a hashtag QLD walks month. So we can see what's happening. So it's a really important time that we can engage with the community and hear about what's happening in your local neighborhood. I'm really fortunate to have some of our collaborators here. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge Gavin from Bushwalking Queensland and also Sue Ann Chapman from C Scenic Rim. Um, they're hosting a walk uh, this weekend and for the next uh, four weekends. Um, of which I'm attending and there's quite a few coming along. Uh, so we're really excited that this is some of the events that's happening across Queensland. Uh, there's another event um, happening on Friday the 12th in Brisbane if you're around, that's at the Governor's House um, and it's a free community walk celebrating International Youth Day and Queensland Walks Month. Um, tickets are on Eventbrite and I can provide that um, in the chat for Mark if you'd like. Um, but I'm not sure if Gavin or Sue Ann would like to talk about the Scenic Rim Walks. They're fantastic. This is an example of what's going on. Uh, but I'd really love to have the opportunity to talk to you more about walking and how we can improve it. And this is our month long opportunity. Do you want to chime in there, Gavin or Sue Ann? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll chime in. The, um, the walks we have plan we've got planned for um, walk. Queensland Walks Month in Scenic Rim is we got um, three sections of the uh, the Great Escarpment Trail, which is a joint project between Bushwalking Queensland and Bushwalking New South Wales, and it follows the um, original Aboriginal pathway from Brisbane to the border. And we, we picked up a lot of history as we've now wrecked the uh, the walk, like. There's an old hut on the side of the road that was a accommodation hotel for the miners traveling from Brisbane to the, to the Tulum gold fields. And it was actually a convict that actually built that hut. It was trying to take the take the, the pressure away from Mr. Chalk who built an inn on, up another road to, to um, for accommodation. So quite interesting history that we've actually located through that area. So people on the walk or um, people joining these walks will also get to appreciate the old history of of the area, the indigenous indigenous um, history as well, because we also we're we're also 195 years after um, Patrick Logan ventured down the area, so uh, that's coming up too. And he also met the the Yagara people down down near Mount Orford. So we've got a, a fair bit on and a good way to celebrate through walking. Of, the, of that area. Thanks so Are much. Still Gavin. tickets available, Gavin? Yep. Reg uh, yeah, just go uh, to um, through the links I'll put up on the chat and just it's just a case of registering and register and um, join the walks. Uh, most of the walks are about half full now, so there's still room for people to join them. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Gavin. I'm not sure if Sue Ann or Lisa would like to um, uh, say anything at all on the walk. My only addition would be um, that we tried to launch this in May as part of Escape in the Scenic Rim, which is uh, Council's inaugural adventure and nature-based festival, um, where we had uh, just over 100 different activities for the month of May. Um, of course, the weather was apocalyptic and completely kneecapped us. And um, so this is this is our second attempt and, and the forecast is looking pretty good. So Gavin, Lisa and I and, and everyone at Bushwalk in Queensland has got everything crossed that the sun continues to shine and we can actually trailblaze. Um, but yeah, really, really thrilled to be part of Queensland Walks Month and to um, work hand in hand with Bushwalk in Queensland with Gavin and um, John and Tanya, who's also with um, Boone Ipswich Trail doing lots of work uh, with them. Lisa and I are super keen to um, just yeah, build trails all over the scenic rim and connect to Brisbane and Ipswich and no one has to hop in a car just on their bicycle. Yep. Nice. And there's one thing that the trail always likes, Sue Ann, which is a scenic area. And that's what you guys have um, in no shortage. So yeah, it's always good. So thank you for that. On a, on um, a note, just to jump in there, Dom, I've now created a trails map of Queensland which I'll put a link up to. So, because all these trails now start to be developed and I'm just amazed that 
what what where there's gaps and everything as well that we can work on. <laughs> Terrific. No, that's great, Gavin. Yeah, that'd be great if you can share that. Yeah. Um, Jess has just popped in the chat too um, with the Sport Rec partnership um, email address as well. So if anyone has any queries for Jess from the previous session or just have a an idea, and Mark will send the chat out um, after the session, so you, that that'll be passed on to everyone. So great. Uh, any other questions for Anna, such as how can I get involved in this wonderful Queensland Walks Month? Um, <laughs> Anna's told us about the um, hashtag. What about, um, does anyone have any other questions for Anna? I'll chime in there and just say that, um, you know, I'd love to uh, acknowledge Outdoors Queensland who supported us from the very first um, walk at work um, and with a little bit of seed funding. So thank you. It's been through Outdoors Queensland that we've been able to do that and it's evolved. Um, we now partner with um, the Queensland Government, Heart Foundation Walking and 10,000 Steps and Anita sent her apologies that she would have liked to have been here from 10,000 Steps to contribute. Um, but it's a really exciting event and it's growing in momentum and uh, we have uh, community correspondence to um, hiking groups from Townsville. We've got groups from Cairns, from uh, Bundy, Toowoomba, um, Brisbane, uh, you name it. So we're really excited. Uh, we'd love to have some Central West groups. So if you have anyone, tap them on the shoulder and tell them to um, contribute. But uh, love to see where you're walking and uh create a bit of a discussion online. Terrific. Thanks, Anna. Um, just a couple of other, a couple of other notices. Um, Girlwee National Park, um, I just, just said it was um, advised by one of our members that um, there's been some changes to camping at some of the Girlwee um, campgrounds um, within the National Park. And as a newly constructed I'm going to get the pronunciation wrong, but Terra Wombola uh, group camping area, um, which is going to be the uh, designated camp area for school groups uh, in the future. So um, the challenge is this new site uh, is not as attractive as the other campsite areas at Girawin and may not work as well for school groups. So I just wanted to put it out there. We're going to try to engage with national parks. We haven't done that yet, uh, but certainly just wanted to check if others are aware of um, what's going on at Girawin, um and have similar concerns and we'll we'll look at that. I did, I've shared that image there because that's straight from the um, QPWS uh, website, which is talking about, you know, the show that outshines all others at Girawin. Um And yeah, it is an important site for campers in general, but also particularly for school groups. So um, yeah, just wanted to, flag that one that was just another one that we are looking at i don't know if anyone else uh goes there regularly or has comments but if you do feel free to contact me as well um separately um we've also got some sad news um green frog adventures who are an outdoors queensland member they've actually advised um just this week that they're actually closing their business um and they're gonna sell off their equipment, um, which actually includes a climbing wall. So um, if you're interested um, in, in um, buying some of that gear, um, yeah, there's details on their website um, and we'll also um, promote that once we get a, get some more information on it. So I just wanted to flag that, um, yeah, that, um, that, that that is happening um, and Green Frog uh, have been long time um members of outdoors queensland so it is um it is some sad news but um yeah we wish um kelly and graham well with um whatever comes next for them as well so um just quickly um we're sort of pushing time at the moment but i uh, just want to flag great getaways queensland as well i mentioned that earlier that's as um as you can see, the logos there on the screen, um, we have funding uh, through the Active Kit program, so Health and Wellbeing Queensland and Queensland Government funding to deliver this um, program for um, outdoor activities for people over 55. Um, we've got um, a range of paddling days coming up, activity days, and also another camp. So um, we'll probably we'll, um, there'll be plenty more information coming out about that, and we'll um, we'll get that happening. Um, as soon as we can um, with with more promotions. So, um, yeah. um, 
I just saw Mark at Camp Kirby just asked in the in the chat if we could um the link to that's to Green Frog's um website if you could pop that in for us, Mark. That'd be terrific. Other Mark. Um yeah. Um very quickly, as we always do, talking about some COVID protocols. Um one very positive, I think, um, decision has been the removal of the um the requirement for vaccinations for people working in education settings. Um, uh, but it's also still the um, the roadmap messaging, um, which includes now the COVID safe checklists and rapid response to outbreaks, etc. But the mask wearing, physical distancing, hand hygiene, staying home when I'm well, uh, the check in Queensland app where appropriate and vaccination and testing. So uh, there's a whole lot in there as well. Um, but it's um, it hasn't been a, a huge amount of changes recently. Um, I did want to flag we are still following up um, with the government in relation to the impacts of the back to school plan on outdoor operators and particularly um, uh, outdoor education operators. Um, we had a meeting in, um, in July uh, with officers from Department of Employment, Small Business and Training uh, and they told us that they'll brief up to the minister so that we we should we are looking for a formal response from the minister um the goal of all of this really is about ensuring that the government as a whole understands the situation that these sort of temporary closures even puts on our uh, sector and uh, on outdoor operators um and so we're still working through that and we'll keep you informed um uh, just wanted to highlight as well, Education Queensland rules are still on the website about, and they have specific rules about attending camps um, and excursions as well. Um, the, the rules haven't had a massive change since the last session we had, um, but um, th the big thing is that there's some information about dealing with close contacts um, while at camp, um, or like so, that there is information in there about Department of Ed, and this is about binding on the schools, Department of Ed schools, but it's also worth knowing if you're providing services to those schools. Um, they've, they've got some really good information in there about how this might work as far as who is considered a close contact in a school camp setting for, for a spy education Queensland, and it's worth a, worth a look. Um, the other one that's happened, um, this is at, this is not education Queensland, but um, Queensland government level was, it used to be, they had a rule in it for a while that if, if you'd had COVID, if you developed symptoms in 12 weeks after you've completed your isolation, you didn't need to get tested. Um, that time limit has dropped from 12 weeks now to 28 days after completing isolation. So, which it seems is about changes in understanding of how the Omicron variant works. So. It's still worth knowing if you're running a school camp or other activities, if your participants have had COVID or finished isolation um, in the previous four weeks, the rules are different for them um, if they develop symptoms of COVID or whether they are considered close contacts. So it's worth understanding that as well um, in that space. So I just wanted to highlight that, that that's changed now to 28 days from when someone finishes um, uh isolation i don't know this stuff it seems to it hasn't changed as rapidly but there's still little changes happening um as we go along and that it's worth knowing about those ones uh and I, i've said this one before as well but um there are some land managers that have or uh, organizations that have um stricter rules than the government's public health directions and it is important to understand that and um, what they have in place and um, working with the, the organisations to, to make sure we're doing the right thing in that space. Um, that one's just again, the bit about the, um, the uh, off-site premises in the Education Queensland rules uh, and where they talk about retaining details of students attending an external venue for schools have to do that. Um, which again, standard practice anyway for school camps and other organized outdoor activities. It's always good to have that list um, of, of um, who's there. 
but it does have some guidance about check-in for um, for school-age children and vaccinations does for adult chaperones, but some of that's um, changing with the education department's um, rules. Um, I've ripped through that fairly quick. Does anyone have any questions or comments on any of the COVID protocols at the moment? No, still as fair as mud. Um, I think it obviously uh, some of the messaging and we've talked about this before um, where the government's talking about it as a workplace health and safety consideration uh, moving towards that situation of individual and organisational responsibility for ensuring we're keeping um, we're, our workers and also our participants um, as safe as possible from COVID and any other risks uh, to them. So um, that's sort of how we're getting to that position um, and having a bit of a different way of thinking about some of this. Um, yeah, so, all right. Um, just a few reminders here. Um, the Inside the Outhouse, I'm not sure if we have any of the orators on the line, but Inside the Outhouse is an opportunity to connect and discuss um, the, uh, the world, particularly of outdoor education and um, uh, looming topics. Um, also, our resources, uh, websites and social media and also e-bulletins. Uh, and a big thanks to Mark for, for putting together uh, our, our bulletins, etc. Um, the Active Kit Round 2 that Jess spoke about and also um, the Great Getaways Queensland opportunities, including if you're a provider and you're interested in um, working with us to either deliver um, an activity day uh, for or a camp, uh, weekend getaway for people over 55, then we're more than happy to speak about that if you want to contact um, Mark uh, or just you know, send us an email or a phone call. And importantly, awards nominations, they do close at the end of August. So uh, please consider who you think should be nominated for that range of categories. Um, and you can nominate yourself um, or you can nominate someone else who you know is doing terrific things. So, um, and I've left that photo in there just because I took it and it's um, one from a bit of devastation after some flooding, flooding at the local sports fields and a walking path that I uh, tend to uh, wander through. Um, that was back in um, a few months ago after the a bit of flooding, but and you can see there's a bit of reconstruction underway um, in the in the foreground, but a nice rainbow in the background. So, yeah. does anyone have any other comments, questions um, before we finish up? No. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, if anyone does have anything um, you want to um, bring up, please um, get in touch with us. Um, our next one of these sessions is Friday the 2nd of September, so uh, first, first Friday of each month. I'm actually going to be away on leave next week, so if you've got any queries um, for me next week, please hold on to them until the following week. Uh, but if you want to get in touch, please do. Um, I'm, I'm just taking a, a bit of a break um, to live by my creed that I like to sign off with, which is um, please look after yourself, look after others and look after the planet. Um, and I'll be looking after myself next week um, with a bit of a, a break uh, from work for, for a few days. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, and um, yeah, I hope to see you outdoors sometime soon. Thanks, Dom. Thank you, Sir Anne. And thank you all. Cheers. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. See you soon.